I need to stop being such a fucking optimist all the time. You know, it's easy from where I sit to get really fired up over all the little victories and then completely lose track of how little we've actually accomplished and how much there is still to do. You know, I get so excited about the momentum of the movement that I start feeling like the world's really changing. And then I go to a public school graduation in Louisiana and the lack of progress just repeatedly stabs me in the brain. My sister's kid just finished high school, and his graduation ceremony was one day after his birthday, so how can I not make the drive over, right? It's 11 hours one way. We've got an episode of The Skeptocrat due out, but my whole family's going to be there. I'm the cool uncle. My absence would be noticed, so I have to go. So we get there with just enough time to check into a hotel, wash the road stink off of us, and head over to the ceremony. So Lucinda and I find the section where my family is, and we settle in for an exciting night of watching 138 kids get their diploma one by one. And my nephew's last name starts with a W. And I've already been sitting in a car for 11 hours. Now, I'll admit, even though my nephew might listen to this episode, that I was looking for ways to stay awake even before this thing started. You know, the high school band's over here lulling me to sleep with a symphonic rendition of Let It Go. My dad's on the other side trying to show me more pictures of his cat on his phone. I'm glancing at this huge alphabetical list of this enormous graduating class trying to figure out which one of these high school kids is most likely to have some amphetamines I can borrow. And then I noticed this curious entry on the program. Okay, so it starts with processional, which makes perfect sense. And then you get the national anthem, which still makes sense. And then there's an entry that says remarks, followed by an entry for welcome. Well, shucks, I wondered, why would there be a section called remarks before the section called welcome? How fucking naive, right? If anybody in the world should have guessed that that was going to be a prayer, it should have been me, right? I do this for a living, and I grew up down here. I heard prayers before every football game, before every pep rally, before my own graduation. I should have known it was coming, but I am a fucking optimist. I see all the lawsuits that we're winning and all the great work the FFRF and other similar groups are doing, and I get this feeling like things might actually have changed. But sure enough, after we finish singing reverent praise to a graphical representation of federal authority, the principal asks us to remain standing while student so-and-so comes up to deliver her remarks. And of course, that's how they're going to squeeze this shit in around the law. It's, it's just a student. She's just making remarks. The fact that her remarks happen to be about Jesus and how we all pray in his name, that's just a coincidence. You know, sure, not everybody in this graduating class is a Christian, but what are we going to do? We're going to censor her? So what? So she mentioned Jesus Christ a couple of times and ended her remarks with amen at the spot in the program where there would be a prayer if that was legal. What about it? Now, this wouldn't be the last we'd be hearing from Jesus, of course. The commencement speaker was this local state representative who's such a stammering idiot, it's hard to imagine him winding up in a profession that relies on public speaking. But, of course, I didn't have to wait long to figure out how a person who couldn't deliver a high school commencement address without losing his train of thought half a dozen times becomes an elected official because he was happy to tell us it was because of his faith in God. And that was the bulk of his advice to the graduating class. Have faith in God. That and don't give up 13 times. He brought up God. He brought up Jesus. He brought up Christ. He brought up Jesus Christ. He brought up the Almighty. Total of eight times during his speech. Coupled with the prayer, we got a total of 12 mentions at this public school graduation. And the only thing surprising about this, when I reflect on it, is the fact that I was surprised. Oh, fucking course the rural Louisiana graduation is going to have a prayer before it. Of course, the local politician is going to verbally suck Jesus off. Of course, we're going to get a dozen mentions of God if the Jesus lovers have themselves a captive audience that probably isn't going to sue them. Now, I I guess at this point I should mention that my nephew is an atheist. His mom's some wacky deist pagan hybrid or something, but he's a bright, unindoctrinated kid, so naturally he's already called bullshit on all the God claims. And I get a chance to talk to him about the prayer the next night. From what he tells me, apparently the school had a vote on whether or not to include it. How about that shit, right? A fucking vote on which of the constitutional amendments they would and wouldn't honor for the evening. And wouldn't you know it, 50% plus one of the student body was in favor of excluding 50% minus one. Now, think about the demographics here. Sure, we're in the South, we're in Bible country, but these are 18-year-olds. Statistically speaking, probably at least a quarter of that class was non-Christian. So when another student stands up at the beginning of their graduation to say, you know, people who don't accept the divinity of Jesus are inferior to those who do, which was precisely what her prayer said, that's a theological fuck you to dozens of the students this graduation is supposed to be for. 
And when the best they can do for a commencement speaker is a local state rep who reminds all the kids that as long as they recite wishes in their heads to a seditious Jew from the Bronze Age, all that other shit doesn't matter. That's a clear fuck you to every kid who not only doesn't believe in this particular carpenter wizard, but it's also a fuck you to all the kids who do and prayed to get into a college they didn't get into or prayed to make the honor roll and didn't make it or prayed to have a commencement speaker who wasn't a stammering jackass. And of course, I'm just seeing the tip of the iceberg, right? If, if they're this bad when the public is there to see it, what are they saying when they have these kids away from the prying eyes of their parents? This is Louisiana, mind you. This is Bobby Jindal's state. That, that dude has proven himself more than willing to sacrifice education for the sake of looking conservative enough to be taken seriously as a VP candidate. I get to talking to my nephew and some of his rational friends the next day. They tell me all about this bullshit creationist propaganda they were subjected to in science class. They tell me that if they hadn't sought it out for themselves, they never would have learned anything at all about evolution. The, the chemistry teacher that railed against the evils of atheism in the middle of a lecture about the periodic table. In other words, the the exact same shit I was going through more than 20 years ago. You know what? We're not winning. It's depressing to say it. I'm sorry to be the pessimist here, but we're not winning and we're not even close. Sure, maybe we're a little closer, but there's a long damn way to go. The only silver lining I could find in that stark, depressing realization was the rage, though. Because if secular students are still being subjected to the same religious overreach that I encountered in high school, at least our side won't be at a loss for passion anytime soon.